Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the Wild. The Tigers turned the tables on the drive last night, jumping out to an early lead and then turning it over to Alfredo Simon, who improved to 4-0 against the Indians this season. Today, the series will be decided by a pair of bearded right-handers, Justin Verlander for Detroit and Cody Anderson for the Tribe. It's the finale of the season from Motown, and it starts next on Sports Time Ohio. of the Detroit River in the Motor City. Inside Comerica Park, the Indians will try to make it two out of three this afternoon against the Detroit Tigers. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. So far, each team has had their way with the other. The Indians got the big offensive outburst on Friday night. Last night, it was Detroit who turned the tables on Cleveland, and they did so behind the bat of J.D. Martinez, who last year, they got him sort of off the scrap heap, had a big year. Now he's having a career season. Well, he's turned into a very good Major League Baseball player, and he gave him a 3 nothing lead last night. It was 1-0 at that point. He jumped on a high fastball, hit it to right center field, where a lot of his power is. And you can see his numbers this year, 35 homers fourth in the American League. 89 RBIs, that's six. So he's had a very good year overall, but in the last two years, he's killed the Indians. Seven homers, 20 rookies last year, and he's not done this year. He has five, and we still have uh, five more games to play with the Tigers. Again, it just goes to show you, it's not just Miguel Cabrera. He's had a lot of great success against the Indians, but you can't just always pitch around him because of people like J.D. Martinez. Pitching matchup this afternoon, Cody Anderson coming off a terrific start against the Toronto Blue Jays will go for Cleveland. Well, Cody in his last start, the second since coming off the DL, commanded his fastball. He stayed out of the middle of the plate. I like he used his curveball a little bit. That's a third pitch that he can use to go with his fastball, his changeup. He had a no decision, only gave up a couple of hits to the Toronto Blue Jays. He's going to face another tough lineup. He'll be facing him for the first time. And uh, two and three this year with a 417 ERA. The old veteran, Justin Verlander, coming against the Indians this year, struggling this year. But in his last five starts, since coming off when he had his arm problems, he's throwing the ball very well. A familiar foe for sure. 42nd career start for Verlander against the Indians. That's the most he's made against any opponent. And among active pitchers, only Mark Burley has started more games against the Cleveland Indians. We're back with today's play-by-play between the Tribe and the Tigers coming up next. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. By your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud sponsors of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO.
and we welcome you back inside Comerica Park here in Detroit. Indians Tigers putting the wraps on their three-game weekend series. And for Cleveland, Cody Anderson will take the hill and try to do much better than Danny Salazar did last night. And with that, the Indians could get out of here with a series victory. With more on the big right-hander, let's go down to Andre Knott. Well, for the big right-hander guys, you guys know it. It's all about the secondary pitches. I heard Rick talk about the open, about the curveball that he brought out last game against the Toronto Blue Jays. And in talking to Mickey Calloway, he goes, look, I like him having the curveball. It's not something that we want him to come out with early. We want him to go to the lineup once or twice and then start using that. Now, the pitch that they've talked about a lot, and they've changed the grip going, is his two-seam or his cutter. The cutter against Toronto had some drop to it and move for him. They just want something that wiggles for Cody Anderson. And he says, look, it worked against Toronto. It can work against Detroit. Use the game plan that you watched Friday night from Josh Tomlin, and you'll be fine. But they like where he's at right now. That last start was very encouraging because he was willing to use that curveball and that cut fastball. All yeah. right. Thanks a lot, Andre. Justin Verlander, meanwhile, is on the hill for Detroit. He's had some, some good starts, some bad starts, but uh, seems to be throwing the ball much better here of late. And he's made a lot of starts in his career against Cleveland. Let's look at the lineup he'll face today for the Tribe. It's brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Jason Kipnis in the leadoff spot, followed by Francisco Lindor. Michael Brantley will DH today in bat third. Then it's Carlos Santana, Lonnie Chisinau in right batting fifth. Jan Gomes will hit sixth. Almonte in center field hitting seventh. Jose Ramirez gets the start at third base hitting eighth. And Michael Martinez will start in left in bat ninth. Northern Ohio Honda dealer starting pitcher today will be Justin Verlander. Verlander picked up a victory in his last start against the Royals September 1st. Went six and two thirds, gave up seven hits and four runs. Two of them were earned, but he did get the win. He's making his second start against the Tribe. He started on June 13th. He went five innings, gave up three hits and a couple of runs in a no decision in that ball game. And in his career, 18 wins, 16 losses in his 42nd start against the Tribe. Let's set the defense behind him this afternoon for Detroit. It is brought to you by Ram, and it looks like this. Collins is in left, Ghosts in center, J.D. Martinez over and right, Castellanos at third, Machado back at shortstop today, Romine gets the start at second, Victor Martinez at first, McCann doing the catching. Tony Randazzo today will call the balls and strikes. Doug, Doug Eddings is at first, Adrian Johnson at second, and the crew chief Hunter Wendelstadt down at third. And we're ready to go on a sunny, clear blue sky Sunday afternoon. Hope you're enjoying your holiday weekend. Jason Kipp just fouls the first pitch out of play. Oh, looking forward to seeing Verlander over his last five starts. He has a 2-2 record, but he's been stingy giving up the runs. Just three earned runs in his last 35 and two-thirds innings. I want to see if he's throwing his fastball maybe a little bit more because he threw a lot of change-ups and breaking balls the last time we saw him. Kipner sends a high fly ball deep in the left center field. Anthony goes on the track at the wall, makes the catch. Well, Kipnis drove that ball a long way, and in most parks, that might have been a home run. Or at least off a wall somewhere. Think of that telling you how good the ball is going to carry today, being it's very hot and humid here. You can see goes going back, and he catches it one step before bumping into the wall. And so up comes Francisco Lindor. Kipnis has hit a number of balls really hard in this series, but nothing to show for it. Now 0 for 9. Lindor takes a strike. He's gone 2 for 8 against Detroit pitching with a double. Inside he missed 1 on 1. back and Verlander gets ahead in the count one and two
Lindor drives one to deep right field, but Martinez will make the catch. Couple of loud outs, two down. Let's take a look at our window systems game time temperature here today. 86 degrees, and the mercury is heating up in a hurry. Michael Brantley serving as the tribe's DH today takes outside ball one. Brantley has gone three for nine in the series. Two of his three hits have been doubles. He leads the league with 42 of them. Almost 80% of the games played, he's had a hit in. <laughs> Lifted to left field, and a routine fly ball for Tyler Collins. The Indians go one, two, three. The Tigers are coming to bat. Brad Osmus and the Detroit Tigers come in with a record of 62 and 73. The starting lineup is brought to you by Toyota. Anthony Goes leads it off, and it's Dixon Machado, followed by Miguel Cabrera. J.D. Martinez, Victor Martinez, Nick Castellanos in the middle. Tyler Collins, James McCann, and Andrew Romine round it out. Cody Anderson is our Northern Ohio Honda dealer starting pitcher with his first start against the Detroit Tigers. Coming off a good one. Against Toronto, where he had a no decision, six innings, three hits, just two runs. He left with the game tied at two. This will be his third start in the Central Division. His other two came with one against Kansas City, one against Minnesota. And he is 0 1, and he has a high ERA. So we'll see if he can handle this Detroit lineup. Again, establishing his fastball, hitting the changeup, cut it a little bit, and then maybe that second, third time around. Mix in that breaking ball. Anthony goes went one for four in the series opener on Friday. Sat out last night's game. Tried to bunt it, I uh, missed it. Jabbed right through it. Up and away, one ball, one strike. When Goes has gotten aboard, he's been a threat to run. He has 20 stolen bases on the year. And any 
anytime you've got a Miguel Cabrera in the middle of your order. It's wise to keep the guys in front of them off bases. Missed outside. Change up floated off the mark two and two. That's out of play. Stays two balls, two strikes. His bat, it sounded like, to third base where Jose Ramirez throws him out one away. Let's take a look at the tribe defense behind Cody Anderson this afternoon, brought to you by Ram. In the left field, it's going to be Martinez making the start, Almonte in center, Chisholm Hall in right, Ramirez is at third, Lindor at short, Kipnis is at second, Santana at first, with Gomes doing the catching. Dixon Machado steps in here. Machado one for three with a double and a run scored on ah. Friday night. Got lined a double down the left field line, made a tremendous play at shortstop. This year at Triple A, he batted 261 with four homers, 48 driven in, and 22 doubles. The 1 1. Liner to second caught by Kipnis, two away. Keys to the game are brought to you by Wayside Furniture, where Indians batters work to count on Verlander. And for Cody Anderson, mix in the curve. And as we heard from Andre not earlier with regards to Cody Anderson, Mickey Calloway, the pitching coach, saying, not necessarily do we want them to break it out right out of the bat, but eventually want them to mix it in. Well, they've never faced it before, so a lot of times he has the advantage going through the lineup the first time. They don't know what you have. So, yeah, you, you want to save something if you can. Command the fastball early and work in that changeup. Cabrera swung and missed at a good sinking fastball. Now gets an off-speed pitch in for a strike. It's quickly 0-2. Again at the low fastball, it's a fair ball. Ramirez from behind the bag, one hops the throw, and Santana grabs it on the other end. Tigers go one, two, three. We are scoreless after one in Detroit.
Let's take a look at our Levin Furniture player profile. Justin Verlander. This is his 42nd career start against the Indians. Made his major league debut against the tribe back on July the 4th of 05. He has been he's been an innings machine throughout his career. Well, and it spent the first time of his career on the DL starting out the year. And right tricep strain. So a lot of the season he spent on the DL. For him, he's normally a 200 inning guy. He's at 93 now. Carlos Santana just one for five in the series, but he's drawn four walks. There's a curveball drops in for Verlander. The Indians have always been able to when they face Verlander to get that pitch count up. Verlander was the second overall pick in the 04 draft. He did not go. The count is two and two. He's lucky he didn't because he ended up picking up the baseball down to the batter's box to throw it out. Downstairs, full count. Verlander under contract for four more seasons and a vesting option for 2020. So, I'm sure there was some concern when he went on the deal. Anytime you're talking about a contract of that length and the kind of dollars that are right. involved, you you wonder, oh no, is this now finally the time where he breaks down? He's been such a workhorse well, throughout they, his career. He has, and they certainly hope not. First time, as I mentioned, on the DL, but he's just getting back into the swing of things now. Mechanically, he's getting things worked out. It seems like he's throwing more fastballs, and it's getting a little more velocity back for him. There's the payoff. And the fastball is inside on the corner for a called strike. He gets Santana one away. Came back on the inside. Check it out on our Nissan pitch tracker. A little comeback fastball on the inside part of the plate. Very good pitch. He threw him three straight sliders once he got ahead of him. And he bounced most of them. Santana didn't go after it. Then he locks him up. I think he might have been looking for another breaking yeah. ball. Chisenhall getting the start again in right field. Pinch hit two run double Friday night 0 for 4 last night. Outside 2 and 0. Says Hunter Wendelstead down to third. And it's two and one now. 
That's what they're trying to do. Uh, to Talani has pounded him inside, and he did go. It was also a pretty good pitch. Fastball about belt high and on the inside part of the plate. Missed outside. Now it's three and one. Lonnie hit 403 in the month of August. Terry Francona said he just thinks he's really taken to right field. 3 1 pitch. Missed inside. Ball four. First base runner. As Chisnall goes down to first and Jan Gomes steps to home plate. Since 1975, Jack Morris has accrued the most victories against the Indians. Andre Clemens, David Wells, and then Justin Verlander. Yeah. The old knuckleballer was in there, Charlie yeah. Huff. You know, it's almost a, a double edged sword, Rick, when you think about the. The unbalanced. Schedule that we have now and where so much play is in the division. Yeah, a guy like Justin Verlander gets more opportunities, but the other team gets more opportunities to see him right. too. Yeah, you, you know, if, you, if you're their number one starter, you're probably. Going to match up probably five times a year with them. So they get to know how you. Are going to pitch you. You got to make adjustments. On both sides, both being the pitcher and the hitter. Yeah, and outside of the division, you're lucky to see a guy twice. Yeah. You know, if, if it just falls where, hey, you're going to face him now and then you're back in the next town, you, you'll come back to the your park the next week, you may see him twice within. Seven eight day period. And then not again for another that, year. Right. <laughs> exactly. High pop on the infield. Third baseman Nick Castellanos in the foul ground. And there are two away here in the second. Well, catch Indians baseball with MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. Stay connected to live radio broadcast stats breaking news and more. Download MLB.com at bat the number one app for live baseball. Abraham Almonte 0 for 5 with a couple of walks so far in the series. Takes a strike and it's 0 and 1. Lonnie Chisnell over there at first base. You know, talking about his transition to right field, Terry said, "Look, he's not a burner, but his his speed. He runs well and his speed plays in right field." And you and I have talked about this many times before. Guy might have great speed. Doesn't mean he's a great base dealer. Right. You might have below average, you know, base dealing speed, but you have the speed to play the outfield. It all depends on how you get jumps and, and taking the right route to the ball. Reading it off the bat. And just having a good first feel. Step. You you can watch a guy in the outfield and just by watching you can tell if he's comfortable or if he's like a you know duck out of water. Lonnie's looked comfortable from day one without a lot of well, experience out there when you play third base it's a reactionary position so you've got to be quick with your first step and to play the outfield I think first step quickness is one of the most important things to do so if he can get a read off the bat he's playing a corner spot foul down the right side by Almonte that certainly helps yeah. and he's going to get more comfortable the more he plays he's only played about 28 games out there 
and half the time he hasn't started he's gone in defensively. Hadn't thought about that though the first step reaction I mean there, there is a. That's, that, that's yeah. what it is at third base I mean as quickly as yeah. you have to get your feet sometimes you don't have time to take a step. You have to react. Well in the outfield if you can pick the ball up off the bat and get that first step quickness and get started in the right direction to where you're heading and you run a good line to the baseball you'll be just fine. Almonte strikes out on a good off speed pitch by Verlander he fans a pair here in the second. No score middle of inning number two. Here in Detroit, and it will be JD Martinez, Victor Martinez, and Nick Castellanos due up for the Tigers. Cody Anderson worked a 1 2 3 first inning. And JD Martinez takes a strike. Changeup misses downstairs, one on one. Martinez is a guy that likes the ball away. He likes to extend the arms and he likes to try and hit that short porch out right. He did it last night on a fastball. Cody gets ahead of him, one and two. The center, Almonte back, and we've got one away. Well, it's Sugardale Dollar Dog Night on September 11th. That'll be next Friday. The Indians will host these Detroit Tigers coming in for a four-game weekend series. Following that game, it'll be fireworks presented by Wayside Furniture. Check uh, Indians.com for your tickets. Victor Martinez has gone two for eight in the series. And a fastball strike from Cody Anderson. A little bit low there, one on one.
Big overhand curveball, but he missed down low with it. Two and one. Victor pops that out of play. Well, you can see when you stay inside on him, he's still trying to serve everything to left field like he did. He had back to back hits last night, throwing the ball out to left field. So you're doing him a favor if you throw it out there. Of course, you have to, you can't stay in all the time, but you got to force him to use his hands. Pulls this one. Yeah, it's foul. All speed pitch. Like a change up. John Gomes has Cody Anderson mixing it up here in the early going. Two two change up Martina is able to spoil it. And stay alive. Victor has been able to do that his whole career. You throw a good pitch, a nasty pitch, and he'll just flick the bat up there and live to see another. Just like that. Yeah, but you, you have to get it down. Those pitches, last two off speed pitches, yeah. have been elevated a little bit, and that helps you as a hitter to just get a piece of it. You have to really use your legs if you're going to go down and try and hit that pitch down and away, and that's where he would have the problems because his legs are been an issue for him this year. There you go. Yeah, he just you could see he just literally threw the bat at it, Rick. Right. He could not get down to go get that pitch because it was down in the zone. That put out has scored five to three. That was Ramirez with the shift on who made the play. I mean, watch Martinez. Normally you see the pellet, he'll go down and drive through the ball, but just one handed yep. that one. Had to take one hand off his bat. His legs will not let him get to it. He went inside a couple of times, so that was really a nice, nice job by Cody Anderson. And Castellanos steps in, one out of seven in the series. And a strike on the inside corner. No score, bottom of the second. Oh man, that nailed Jan Gomes. I think it either got him right on the shin guard or right above it. it sounded, right square it sounded the like the shin guard. Ouch, right on the kneecap. You know, Oops. even with that shin guard, Rick, if you're if you Turn your knee just a little bit. Watch, see how it's exposed, the inside of the knee? And that's right where it hits. On the inside portion, even though the padding's there, you can find a little crease. Yeah, that's, that's a stinger right now. He just needs to get that pain out of there. That's what he needs, a little time. Was also the same knee he injured earlier this year, so I don't know if that has any bearing on it or not. But the one-two down low. Swung out and foul tipped into the glove to end the inning. Cody Anderson. Gets his first strikeout. The Tigers go one, two, three. No score after two.
Packers next Saturday. 10,000 fans will get a Terry Francona Scooter bobblehead, courtesy of Meritech. Fireworks to follow that ball game on Saturday night. Check Indians.com for your tickets. Jose Ramirez is going to lead off for the Tribe here in the third. Pops one up right at third base. Castellanos in the foul ground. One down. Second time he's caught one like that. Let's go down to Andre Knott. Andre, with regards to Justin Verlander, it was a little spotty there at first, but it seems like he's found his way back. Yeah, slowly but surely he's starting to feel like himself. He's out at 1.53 ERA over the last eight starts while striking out seven or more five times. And Brad Osmond says, you know what? He goes, he can be healthy and he can see the mile per hour readings and everything else, but it's good to see him actually go out there. It feels like he's getting his mojo back and feeling like the old Justin Verlander slowly but surely. Yeah, three times in his first six starts. He got roughed up, gave up six runs on ten hits to the Yankees, seven runs on seven hits to the Blue Jays, seven runs on eight hits to Baltimore. Now, granted, those are lineups that can do it to you. Michael Martinez trying to bunt his way aboard and goes foul. You know, as long as he's been around and he's been a very good pitcher. But he had a no hitter going into the ninth against the Angels. And in the ninth inning, it was a double down the line and caught chalk right there. That was the only hit he gave up in that ball game. That would have been his third no hitter. But I mean, you know, a great start. That's something that'll give you confidence. But in his time around baseball, he has beaten just about everybody and wore them out. So when you, you're down and you're coming back, teams have a payback for you. <laughs> you know, they want to get even. And he's going to have to work. And if he's healthy, there's no reason why he can't come back. Uh, to me, he's a lot more aggressive early in this game. Well, he talked about the near no hitter two starts ago. Last time out, he gave up two earned runs to the Royals. Three starts ago against Texas. He went seven innings and gave up just one earned run to that one. Upstairs. You know, when they're pitchers, he's, he's good enough. When you're on your game, they're, they're going to shut offenses down. There's no, no doubt about it. just feels he's getting with every start coming out there mechanically he's getting better and better and he's finding it and he's getting into a rhythm. He blows one by Martinez third strikeout two down. Just went with a nice high fastball elevated it's a ball so Martinez ends up getting himself out there. Had some movement to it running away. Top of the order now, Jason Kipnis. Now he started the game with a fly ball that took Anthony Goes, the center fielder, to the base of the wall and left. He actually bumped up against it when he made the catch. So kind of thought right out of the gate, oh man, look out. The ball's going to really jump today. But nobody's been able to really hit one hard since. Well, other than his strikeouts, they're all fly ball outs. First time through, five have been in the air. His three strikeouts. In the walk. Two and zero for Kipnis. Back out of play. Upstairs, three balls and a strike.
back into the seats. He's pitching in a lot more than uh, I've seen him in the past as well. So far that first time through the lineup he's thrown a lot of fastballs into the left handers. Now the 3 2. Kipnis drives one a right field but Martinez on the move will make the catch. Again the Indians are retired in order. And we're scoreless middle of the third. Hold one to stay tuned later in the game for Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. No score Indians Tigers bottom of the third for Detroit bottom third of the order coming up here Tyler Collins James McCann and Andrew Romine. And a roller to second. Kipnis will throw him out one down. You like that first pitch roll over on a little sinker going away. One pitch, one out. Especially when you've never faced it before. And that'll bring up James McCann, a Tigers catcher. Off the plate, ball one. It's low, two and oh. It was Detroit last night doing it with two outs. They scored a lot of their runs. Remember that first time through was the Bottom part of the lineup had three consecutive hits after Danny had two out, and nobody on. And Salazar just never seemed to have a good feel for his overall command. Just wasn't sharp compared to what we saw in the start before. Cody Anderson, however, looks as good as he did his last time out against Toronto. First time through the order, seven up, seven down. Pops Collins straight up in the air, center field, Almonte. Two away. Grab some friends and catch a ball game at the popular corner bar. It's open to all fans at Progressive Field. 
$13 district tickets presented by Sports Time Ohio are a big seller, so get yours today. You know, another thing, Rick, maybe too much is made of this at times, but Cody's getting the ball, and whatever Jan Gomes puts down, he's throwing it. Last night I noticed, and this is not a knock on it, on Roberto Perez or Danny Salazar, but I just noticed he was shaking him off a number of different times. Well, that's a, a communication thing that they should have it together before they go out and start the ball game on how you want to pitch the lineup and the hitters that are playing. They know well in advance. You know, it might have been one of those nights where Danny he just didn't feel it for a certain pitch. Like, and I just don't well, have the confidence to throw that. I remember. Perez on a 3 2 count wanted to go put down. Yes. They said no. They said no. He put down fastball. He shook him off and went. And he threw a changeup, but he got a base hit. So maybe Salazar felt his fastball wasn't there or he wasn't commanding it. I mean, yeah. that could also be an issue, but still, that, that catcher's got to go with what he feels is going to get him out. Now the 1 2 inside. You know, Rick, how about confidence? Because in talking to Danny last night, it just seemed like he didn't have confidence in anything else he was throwing. I don't know if it was on Roberto, but he didn't seem confident in throwing anything else. That very well could be because if you're if you're not 100 percent convicted, then you're in trouble. Well, I'll tell you what, the conviction has been there for Cody Anderson. Nine up, nine down. Through three, no score in Detroit. No scores. We go to the fourth. Our great clip of the game from last night. Brought to you by Great Clips. In the hole. Lindor off balance. Great throw to get his man at first. And then he made a nice little pick on a back end or a one hop throw to get Castellanos. I think the kid's going to be all right. He's been, uh, he's been fine. There's no doubt about it. Francisco Lindor fly to right his only time up. There's a big overhand curve from Verlander that floated up out of the zone. Popped him up. I'm not sure if that was Lindor who we heard. Give out that long sigh like oh. Or that was somebody closer to the dugout, but that's out number one. They're legends, icons, and warriors starting next month. Two of the biggest names in UFC will face off as coaches and interim featherweight champion Conor McGregor and Uriah Faber join an all new season of The Ultimate Fighter. The mayhem begins Wednesday only on Fox Sports 1.
Michael Brantley, a fly ball to left, his only time up. Both pitchers on their A game here this afternoon in the series finale. Just a Verlander, Cody Anderson locked in a good duel. Now into the fourth inning. Inside the corner, a called strike. Brantley agrees to disagree with Tony Randazzo. Mickey Calloway talking with Danny Salazar. Swing and it's a foul back. Well, there's one there that you, you you hate to do, especially when you you felt like the umpire gave him one the pitch before, and then you barely check your swing and it fouls off the bat, puts you down in the count 0-2. So Seven fly ball outs to three strikeouts. Nothing on the ground yet today. Bradley pops one out of play. You know, watching Mickey sit in the dugout talking to Danny Salazar reminded me of Jordan Bastion's story on MLB.com. He had a lot of comments from Mickey Calloway in there with regards to Trevor Bauer and where he's at right now. And I think some of the things that he still has to work on, and there's still a long ways to go in his development. As Michael pops one foul ground, it's going to get down. One of the quotes that jumped out at me, Rick, was after the after his start against Toronto, in which he got bombed for five runs on six hits and an inning and a third. He told reporters after the game that he threw a lot of quality pitches. And Mickey responded to that by saying, "It just kind of shows you that he doesn't quite know a lot about pitching yet. That's the way I take it. Those are not quality pitches, and he thinks they are." Well. If you sit down and you, and you look at the go look at your outing and you'll see I mean we witnessed it we looked at we showed it. Pitches were up in the zone they weren't good pitches Donaldson hit a good pitch to drive in a run. Well and let's bring in Andre because Andre I was you know Terry Francona always has a way to, to yes. put things and he said you know sometimes I wonder does he just say these things to aggravate us yeah they're worried about that they look we've talked about the word stubborn and they, you know and, and another thing in that story that really jumped out to me and, and Mickey said it he goes his stuff is good enough that he's gotten to this point by just being able to just throw it up there and it's worked mm -hmm. and he goes that may have I don't want to say retarded the growth in how he pitches but it's hurt him at times when he's up here and Terry's doing this on purpose this is a, they're at a point now where they're trying to get through to Trevor and they want to make a point to him Hey, do it our way. As, as Mickey and Jason Bure told me a couple days ago, they go, look, baseball's been around a lot longer than, than that we've been around. He's got to follow what we're telling him if he wants to be successful. Yep, sometimes it takes uh, people a little longer to, to get it. Well, the last comment I'll leave you with from Mickey was this. I think what it all comes down to is, quote, he's a really smart kid, but he's not a smart pitcher yet. That's what we're trying to work towards. He doesn't know a lot about pitching, so we're trying to instill the basics as far as that goes. He knows a lot about mechanics and throwing the baseball, but pitching to hitters in situations, that's a different well, you story. You don't want him going out there and going a couple innings and having to leave the ball game when you're a starting pitcher. That's how you have to learn. They're trying to teach him so it doesn't happen that way. Well, the only other way you can maybe teach him is to pull him from a starter to and well, see hey, how he likes it. I think it's human nature Rick. We're, we're all we all have a little stubbornness in us. It's just when do we finally reach the point where we say OK. Now I get it. You know what I mean? Because you might how many times I'm sure you in particular were told things by your parents or coaches and you probably said yeah whatever I'm going to do it my way. But yeah. eventually you got to come around. What do you mean, me for sure? <laughs> <laughs> I agree, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> well, Tito had another word for it. He goes, I don't want him to hit rock bottom. He goes, but if he has to, we'll get him well, there. We'll get him back up. Sometimes it takes rock bottom before you can start coming back up. So, you know, everybody is different. 
he'll learn the hard way. Like I said, if they're upset with him, instead of keep sending them out there, miss a start. We're in September. We have extra pitchers. Let him think about it. Two down, base is empty. Two ball, two strike count for Carlos Santana. I've always, too, deferred to the fact that, look, Trevor, and all of these guys, especially compared to you and me now, they're, they're all young, and, and they're not necessarily experts in how to handle the media. And yeah. when you're frustrated, when you're upset after a game, and you just got knocked out after an inning and a third, you might say some things to the writers that you probably shouldn't have said just because you're mad and you're upset. And maybe that was part of the frustration with Mickey and, and Terry saying, like, don't don't say these things publicly that you threw quality pitches right, when right. they just hammered well, the ball all over the yard against you. That f could very well be it. You know, you don't want to talk to them, so you just say something where they'll, they'll, they'll leave. But you have to learn that part of the game as well. Yeah, it is all part of it. McCann, the catcher, has it. And again, the Indians are gone in order. Middle of the fourth, no score in Detroit. As we go to the bottom of the fourth, it's time now to tweet your strongest fan photo. You is using the hashtag SDO data strong fan for a chance to have one of your pictures shown on an upcoming telecast. It's all courtesy of T-Mobile. Cody Anderson goes to work against the top of the order. Anthony goes Dixon Machado. And Miguel Cabrera. Yes, Tried to did. put his first time up. That time they said it didn't go. It looked like he did from well, back here. First time up, he clearly jabbed at it and came up empty. That time he tried to pull it back and they said he did. Now oh, that's wow. see that's a, to me that's a, that's a, he offered at it. There's no doubt, no question. The intention was there. Pull it straight back. I could see it. He didn't. It went forward. It's like he kind of jabbed at it and then pulled it back. Yes. Everything's away in this at bat, and it's now three and zero. Oh. Watch. Here you go. You go forward. Yeah. Oh and yeah. Then he that's pulled it definitely. Back. There attempt. you go. Yep. That's a better shot. Four straight. That? And all four in the exact same location. So the first base runner for Detroit comes on a four pitch walk to Anthony goes. Now Dixon Machado checks with the third base coach Dave Clark to see if. They want to try to get a runner in the scoring position for Miguel Cabrera here but. then again you run the risk of taking the bat out of yes, his hands if you, you do. Certainly do. 
They only have 16 sacrifices on the year, but this is a young player. That's a nice team. No, maybe a hit. He's oh, he's safe at first. Yeah, he beat Anderson to the back. That's a great hustle. That's a great bunt. Santana had to field it and flip it. They did everything. It was just a really good bunt. He pushed it hard enough to get it past where Anderson could only go, and he does beat him to the base. Santana fields it, gives the quick flip, and watch the foot on the base. Beat him by a half a step. Excellent bunt. So that goes as a base hit. He got the bonus because he laid down such a good bunt. So the Tigers two on, nobody out. And now you almost have to pitch to Miguel Cabrera here. Yeah, you sure do. The These are situations you try to stay away from, but that's why those leadoff walks are so costly sometimes. Well, that was four straight. He was never even in it. And every pitch, as you mentioned, same same spot off the plate. Now he's looking for an atom ball. And it's low ball one to Miguel Cabrera. Cabrera grounded out to third is only time up. But that first at bat, Cody Anderson got him down early 0 2. Well, it's a little different when you have guys in scoring position. This guy is the best at it. A good fastball, and he was taken all the way. Yeah, one he's, one. he's taken to look for something. He, you know, that first time through, he remembers how he pitched him. So he's patient now. He's waiting for a pitch that he likes. Whether it be that changeup, you don't know. But this guy is a very smart hitter. Went back with a fastball and inside, not by much. Two one. Nice change up. Missed. He was sitting on the changeup, but he didn't connect That's right. on it. That had good downward movement to it. It was going down. It was going in. See two one. He took a fastball in the pitch before, and he was looking for that changeup. He was still out in front of it. He wasn't his first at bat. And he was right there. We'll see what he's doing here with two strikes. And the two two. Hit on the ground. Lindor. Goes to second. There's one on the first. Double play. Oh, just what the doctor ordered. Lindor to Kipnis on to Santana. The Indians turn two. Goes, moves to third base. Well, he got him with a fastball. It was a good pitch. That ball was a way that he rolls over on. Lindor slipped uh, uh, initially yeah. going after that ball, but recovered. And it's an easy double play for the Indians, just what Cody Anderson needed. You know what was interesting to me on that pitch, Rick, is how many times we've seen Cabrera on a fastball that's up and away, and he goes the other way with yeah, it. one of the few times he rolls over on it. That's true. J.D. Martinez to center field. Almonte's there. And Cody Anderson pitches out of a jam. We played four, no score in Detroit.
to you by your Northern Ohio Honda dealers. By the Cleveland Clinic, call for an appointment today. And by the game-changing all-new Ford F-150, the future is tough. A warm, sunny day in downtown Detroit, Michigan. Labor Day weekend, and boy, the streets were packed with revelers last night. Here in the fifth inning, Lonnie Chisnall, Jan Gomes, and Abraham Almonte. Through four, each pitcher locked in. Dynamite stuff. Yeah, that, that only hit came on a, a nice push bunt. Verlander still has not gotten out on the ground. Everything by the air or strikeouts. I was just thinking Rick back to last night with all the folks that I saw all over the streets. I mean folks are just really enjoying the warm weather and I was thinking that you know working in baseball all these years Labor Day weekend Memorial Day weekend is an extra day off of work Fourth of July right. sometimes fall. Well, yeah not for us though it's just another day. Yeah <laughs> you're out at the ballpark. Enjoy it tomorrow. We'll have another day game in Chicago. 1 1 foul back. But the weather being this warm is something very special, too. Because yeah. there's a lot of times you can come into September, it can be a little chilly, especially with the towns we hit. It's been absolutely gorgeous. Hot, even humid. 86 in game time today. 1 2. Lonnie chase one up the ladder. That's four strikeouts for Verlander. One away. Time for a Mazda game break. Here's Al Palowski. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Al. 33 home runs for Batista ties him with Mike Trout. Trout's still on that homerless uh, drought. That's tied for six in the league, and, and Trout's gone what a month now. He's got 27, like. uh, I think 28 games. I think August 7th was his last home run. Chris Davis, the only. American leaguer with 40 home runs. He leads the league, one more than Nelson Cruz. Josh Donaldson finally has company in the 100 RBI categories. Corey is a Davis just got his 100th last night. Boy, what a second half that guy has had. Up the middle, perfectly placed by Gomes, but it's cut off by Machado, and he throws him out. Well, I thought initially it was going to get through because it was right over the top of the mound. He didn't have anything on it. Yeah. You know, he had uh, it was all arms right here. You're going to see he didn't get enough of it. He had to reach for it and wasn't hit sharply enough to get into center field. So 16 hopper, as you like to say. Yeah. That's where the short stops. Let's see your range. Go get it and make a throw. And Machado did, and there are two down now. Justin Verlander has retired 10 in a row after walking Lonnie Chisnall in the second inning. Almonte looks at ball one up high. Right back to the screen.
upstairs. You know, Rick, I don't see anyone really with a stronger case for MVP. And granted, there's still about 30 games to go than Josh Donaldson of the Blue Jays. Yeah, he's, he, I would think he's the leading candidate. He's had one of those years, especially years. And what makes that ironic to me is that here's Kansas City with the best record in the league, second best in all of baseball. But they're, they're a true team. They've got every, yeah. but there's no one guy that's having a monster season. Yeah, Kendry Morales has been the, the guy that's made a difference in that offense. In the number four hole, the switch hitter, he's he's approaching the 100 RBI mark. Yeah. Uh, but not the home runs because Kansas City's a big ballpark. They yeah. just don't hit home runs. Almonte juices one to deep center field, goes on the run. He won't get it. It'll go to the wall. Almonte around second. He's on his way to third. He'll make it there with a triple. And the first hit of the game for the tribe is a two out triple for Almonte. It's already his fifth triple on the year and that's important because Almonte is only playing in his 27th game. Yeah he got a fastball out over the plate and he drove it. Ghost made a nice attempt at it but boy if he didn't get up quickly he realized this could be an inside the Parker. But yeah triple number five for Almonte although it comes with two outs so they're going to have to try and get a base hit here. This is a great triples park. Abraham Almonte is at third, looking for a ball in the dirt. Or base it off the batter Ramirez. Jose takes a strike. Verlander has only uncorked one wild pitch in his 14 starts. That was the 52nd triple hit in this ballpark this year, which leads all of baseball. It's tied with Coors Field. As well, but it's a, if you can run an average to above average speed, this is a great triples ballpark. How about that? That's the 22nd triple for the Indians, and Almonte has five of them. And he was been here for what 20 some games, 27, right? Yeah, have been here a month. Now the 1 1. Oh, all the strike. Ramirez thought it was high. Now he's in the hole one and two. Let's see another look here. Definitely at the extreme upper portion of the zone. Big hopper to short. Machado throws him out. Inning over. So the two run triple dies at third. Middle of the fifth. Still no score in the Motor City.
Tickets are located in the family deck out at Progressive Field, home to our expanded kids' clubhouse. The offer is available only at Indians.com. One hit apiece. As we head to the fifth inning, that's what we have so far. Each pitcher has walked a batter. Anderson has struck out two. Verlander has struck out four. Victor Martinez with a ground out to third is only time up takes a called strike. Night you made a comment about the drums. Yeah. You wonder if there was a marching band going on it. I was walking out of the park last night. It was those guys with the, yeah. the buckets. Uh huh. The five gallon buckets, plastic. And they play right between the parking garage and the football stadium. So the sound just echoes off the walls and yeah. fills like, the air. It's like playing a bit in between a mountain range. Yeah. Well, they were at it all last night. Now the one, two. That's hammered right field line. It's a fair ball. Martinez will head to second base. And even with his slow foot, he gets in there with a leadoff double. Yeah, with the way Victor runs right now, he has uh, his 18th double. I'll bet 11 of those could be triples if he could run. He just can't run, but he pulls it down into the corner, even though they had the shift on. It was right down the line by the time Chisholm Hall could get over to get it. He can lumber into second base. It's the leadoff double, second hit for the Tigers. Well, Nick Castellano struck out his only time up back in the second inning. First time through the order, it was nine up, nine down. Second time through the order. Five batters in, they've got two singles and a walk. But Anderson got a double play ball and really helped him out in the fourth. Now he runs one in off the plate. One and one. Andre talked about you know, maybe using the two seamer or coming up with a you know a cut fastball to just give himself a little movement, right? Well, now you're in the middle part of that game. You can come up and show a hitter dipper. You've got a runner in scoring position. There's nothing wrong with banking out that hook now. One and just two. to show these guys that you know it's something else. You don't have to really throw for a strike. Just take them off the fastball or that little change up he's throwing just to plant the seed. Missed away. Cutter. Two and two. That's the cutter right there. It's about 90 miles an hour. Anywhere 88, 89, or 90. Three two. Oh my. It's called ball four and it looked like strike three. He was gazing in wasn't he. Take another look at this. Well it was one going down and in. And they had to call that low because it had play. 
Combs sitting just in the middle of it. That's a really good pitch right there. That's a tough one to get called the ball. 3-2 pitch. So put runners at first and second now with nobody out. Same situation well, in the fourth inning. Remember the first game, uh, Josh Tomlin had his one, one and only walk on a 3-2 pitch. That was yeah. a pitch very, very similar to that. You know, it's tough. Just don't just don't let that uh, get you rattled. Regroup. Get yourself a ground ball. Try and get a double play. Outside ball one. Tyler Collins grounded out to second base his first time up. Can bet that's what Anderson's looking for here. Get him to roll over like Cabrera did at last inning. But he falls behind 2 and 0. Fastball. And he misses down and in three and one. Catcher James McCann waiting on deck. Back to run the count full. AT&T U verse rewind last inning with two on nobody out. Similar situation we have here. He went at Miguel Cabrera. He got behind him, but he got him to roll over on that fastball. Following the changeup, but he has to throw a strike here. I don't care what you throw. It's got to be a strike. You can't walk him. The payoff pitch. It popped up foul out of play. Breeze has picked up just a little bit since the game started. And not that you need any help because it's warm, it's humid, but the ball's going to carry out the left. It's going to get a little extra boost if you can get it up in the air. Payoff pitch. Out of play. Do a nice job of following him off. Lift for another pitch, making him work. Collins yesterday got a nice base hit to left field on a low pitch, and then hit one out to left field on a fastball up. But he looks a little tardy on the fastballs the way that Anderson has just thrown him the last two pitches. Now the 3 2 again. Threw it by him and strikes him out. Third K for Anderson. Yeah, that's the pitch he needed to make. He came back three straight fastballs. It's going to be our Circle K strikeout. Combs wanted that ball in, and he challenged him, and he came up empty. So I'm glad he went right with the fastball. You know, it's like we talked about last night as Mickey Calloway goes out to talk to Anderson. You can have a guy like Nathan Evaldi who averages 97 miles an hour with his fastball, but. It's what the hitter sees that's most important. Anderson might only be 92, but Collins isn't picking it up. Well, it, it showed me uh, when it was 3 2, he fouled off a couple of fastballs to the left field side. He, he went right there. They did not, you know, throw an off speed pitch. You had to keep continuing to throw strikes in that at bat. He did, he got the strikeout. Well, Cody's been very good. First time through the order, it was nine up, nine down. Second time through for the first six reaching. Yeah, they had first and second, nobody out last inning. Now well, first and second, and they had nobody out in this inning, but now with the strike on, and it came at the right time. James McCann will be the better. McCann has grounded into 13 double plays.
wonder what the message was there for Mickey Callaway to go out after he gets the strikeout. Well, maybe talking about something uh, about this hitter uh, going at him. The switch hitter Romine on deck. Bullseye one on one. There it is. Kipnis will go to Lindor. There's one on the first double play. He does it again. Cody Anderson, a magician in the last two innings. A couple of double play balls get him out of trouble, and we are scoreless through five. Season tickets offer the best perks, including savings and access to Tribe Rewards. Today's Tribe Rewards TV code is Sandy. Visit Indians.com for complete details. All right, we go to inning number six. And Michael Martinez is going to lead it off for the Tribe. Then Jason Kipnis and Francisco Lindor. Martinez struck out his only time up. In the third. Verlander has made exactly 70 pitches through the first five. 47 of those have been strikes. Swung on and missed. Martinez aggressively getting after it. He finished, well, I should say when he got called up. I assume that meant the season was over, though. 11th in the International League. With a 289 batting average. Pop back out of play. Is their season over? Or do they still is this the final week? Now they might, might might be just finishing up today. Yeah, uh, what's, yeah. The first week of September yeah. is usually when it's over. Playoffs should be starting. When was the last time we've seen Justin Verlander at 72 pitches starting the sixth inning? It's been quite some time because usually the Indians have always had him up around the 100 in the fifth. Well, Michael Martinez slaps one back through the middle, and that one got through. And the Indians have their leadoff man aboard for the first time today. Looks like he gets a breaking ball here that stays up in the zone and easy for him to handle and slaps it right back up the middle. Machado making a diving attempt. Now Michael had 11 stolen bases at Triple A. 
Verlander is one of those guys who has a lightning quick move to yeah. first base. He's he throws over more than anybody. He's quick, and yes, he does. But it doesn't slow the runners down. <laughs> In the long run, no, it doesn't. They're still going to go and try and steal it if, they, if they're off and trying to run. Kipnis 0 for 2 on the day. He throws over the most, and Lester throws over the least. <laughs> Well, Rick, being that we're in the sixth inning, does that change the thinking at all of a base runner? No score? Do you want to be more aggressive here? With well, the top you've of got the that hole between first and second. got to leave for Kipnis. You know, uh, he's not too familiar with the Verlander's move yet. I'm sure Sandy has told him, watch out. He's got very quick feet, and he will throw over here a lot. But he hasn't thrown it yet, so go figure. Well, Kipnis was thinking about a bunt, and it went right back over the screen. I'm sure doing that on his own. Now it's one of one. Murph tells me uh, Labor Day wraps up the International League season, so tomorrow will officially okay. be the last day of the minor league season in AAA. Michael Martinez left with a 289 mark. That was 11th best in the league. by Verlander and it's one and two. <laughs> Missed outside trying to float even a changeup. Yeah, it, it, either that or a curveball. He tried to he tried to throw that a couple of times to Kipnis before and just couldn't do it. Left it up and out. Sometimes that'll happen. Maybe if he's a little too quick to the plate with a runner at first base trying to get that ball to his catcher, even though you're throwing it for a breaking ball. That's the pitch to try and steal on. Well, now it's three and two. I'd start him. Look for Martinez to take off at first. Last inning was the first time he ever had a ground ball out in the game, so start your runner here, no doubt. There he goes. And Kidner shoots it right back up the middle. Backhanded by the second baseman, Roman. Safe at second, out at first, and Kidner can't believe it. Well, he looked over there, and I'll tell you the, the reason why. That's why you start the runner, right there. It was a really nice play by Romine. He tracks it down, and by the time they flipped it to second, he was safe because he started. And then the relay to first base, and uh, Kipnis felt he was safe. I They're know he challenge. looked in. Yeah, they'll challenge it. Look at good play. He was safe there, going in head first, and then hard to tell there. Well, on that look. Take forward, forward, ball. Safe. He's safe. Yes, yeah. he is. He'll be called safe. They'll overturn that. Be a fielder's choice. He did beat it. And uh, that was a good all around play. That is the one reason why you start your runner. Stay out of a double play. On this point, they couldn't even get an out. It's a really nice play by Romine to get the ball to Machado. Kipnis hustling down the line, beats it out. And we have the Indians challenge. Hunter Wendelstadt is the crew chief. He's on your right in the left-hand box. And the man with his back to the camera is Doug Eddings, the first base umpire who made the call. This should be the Indians' opportunity to have first and second, nobody out. But from this angle, when we slowed it down, you can see Kipnis's foot is on the base, and the ball is still not in the Cabrera's glove. So that's an easy call yep. right there. Here comes the call. He is he safe. Is safe. It's overturned. So the Indians win the challenge, and they've got two on with nobody out, just like the Tigers have had in the last 
two innings. Well, you know what's coming here with Lindor up. He's going to be bunting. They're going to give Jason Kipnis a single. How do you give a single when they went to second base first? Fielder's choice. I don't know, but that's the, that was the official scorer's decision. We'll see if it stands. That, to me, that's a fielder's choice. They went to second base before they made a play on Kipnis. Right. That can't be a single. Well, two on, nobody out. Francisco Lindor twice has flied to right, but looking for the bunt here. Verlander turned to second to see if Lindor would tip his hand, but he did not. I don't think it really matters. Lindor has bunted almost exclusively in these situations. He's a terrific bunter as well. You got Victor in at first, and you've got Castellanos creeping in at third. Popped it back out of play. Sacrifice bunts. And Mike tells me he's also leading the majors with those 11. Isn't that crazy? It just shows you how it's it's kind of a lost, I don't want to say art, but it's. Uh, they don't bunt much anymore. Yeah, it's just, it's not part of the game plan for a lot of teams anymore. Well, the way the teams are scoring, more teams should incorporate it, I'll tell you that. They think you give up and out, but sometimes that puts a pressure on the defense. And if more guys could bunt successfully, they would have to think about it. Yeah, and it's not like this is Terry Francona saying to Lindor, okay, every time there's a guy in first, you have to bunt. This is Lindor saying, oh, this is, I can do this, I can do it well. And I'll give Michael Brantley a lot of RBI opportunities, so why not? When you got a guy pitting behind you who's right. leading the league in doubles. So nothing, nothing game, sixth inning, you want to get on the board. Time Machado was headed towards third, maybe tipping off the wheel play. Well, Victor broke in and then started to break back too. That would not be a bad idea. They're going to call timeout now. The skipper wasn't happy yeah. with that defense. Brad Osmus says, "Wait a minute, timeout. Let's get a huddle here." Yeah, they. That must not be the play he put on. Well, Rick, let me ask you: With Lindor, if he does bunt here, they could simply walk Brantley. Yeah. They then, could. They have to face Santana. Yeah. That yes, they could. That'd be exactly what they would do for you know uh, Cabrera. If you're if you're Lindor here, I would think about putting it down the first baseline, only because Victor Martinez is over there. Force him to come up and try and make a play. I'm trying to look at how many games he's even played at first base. Well, this it's year. not been many, and you know he's trying to cheat in and. You have to get it out here. And Lindor is a good enough butter. He could go either way. Normally, you'd, you'd make the third baseman field it to get the out. Only five games played at yeah. first, even with all the time Cabrera missed this year. That's my point. Make him make a decision out there. The 1 1, not showing fun, and he rips one. Deep right center field. That's in the gap. That'll go to the wall. Coming around third, Michael Martinez scores. Right on his heels is Jason Kipnis. He scores two. Lindor. Glides into third base with a two run triple and the Indians take a two to nothing lead. How about that? You think he's going to bunt you throw him a nice fastball <laughs> Lindor. Juiced it into right center field. It's going to be our McDonald's. I'm loving it. And how can't you love this? Look at Verlander watch his reaction to it. He can't believe it either. Thinking the bunt was going to be on, and I think everybody in the ballpark did. You throw him a high fastball, and what does he do? He turns on it and drills it into the gap. So the Indians take a 2 nothing lead. And with an opportunity to add on, nobody out. And Michael Brantley, the batter, and taking a breaking ball for a strike. That was a thing of beauty. Yes, it was. Especially after Osmus just went out to talk the defense over. Well, Sarbaugh came down and talked to Lindor, so maybe Francona flashed him something that could let him go ahead and swing it. Yeah. Or tell him to go swing it. Brantley pops one to center. Is it deep enough? Lindor's got good speed. This will Goes, be comes in. He makes the catch. Lindor stopped about a quarter of the way. Ball hit the top of the mound. He would have been safe, but 
That's 2020 vision. It's always no, perfect. That's the tough throw from center field. You have to get it over the mound. With nobody out, you're not going to take that chance. He wasn't deep enough. But when you throw it from center field, your job is to get it over the mound, and it hit the top, and it deflected up. And that's why Verlander, that's why they make the pitcher go back there and back up. Look, and it hits the mound, and it goes straight up in the air, and it was over the head of McCann, but Verlander's right there to help him out. So now they'll bring the infield in with one out. And Carlos Santana gets an RBI chance. Good pitch. Our stat of the game brought to you by Buick. Most career home runs against Justin Verlander, Carlos Santana, just one behind Jim Tomey. But right here, you just love to see a maybe just a fly ball to the outfield. That's all you need. You need the, the ball hit hard. Infield's in. Santana was out looking in the second and he fouled out right at home plate in the fourth. So even though he's had a good track record against Verlander, today it's been a different story so far. Boy, he has not given him any breathing room. In, in, in. Like to look for something a way to expand, extend your arms, but there's that comeback fastball again. Fly ball center field. This one's going to get down for a base hit. Lindor had to wait on it, and he comes home safely as Santana delivers with his 68th run batted end of the year, 3 0 Cleveland. That ball was weird off the bat. It wasn't hit hard, but the only question is would it stay up high enough for Goes to make a play on it? You don't have to hit it hard. He got his hands. It was a high fastball. And you'll see it. He brought the hands in, and that's all you need. Infield's in. Gets it in front of the outfielder, so a good job by Santana to drive in the third run of the inning. Lindor sparked a drive with a big two run triple. Now Lonnie Chisnall with a fly ball to center field. Two down. But you know what? Give credit where credit is due. This inning began with a base hit out of the number nine hole by Michael Martinez. And then Terry started the runner on the pitch to Jason Kipnis. And because of that, Romine went to second on the force, couldn't get Martinez. And then when they went to first base, Kipnis beat it out. They had to challenge the play, get the overturn on replay, but that set the whole inning up. And then Lindor deked him, thinking he was going to bunt, and he stroked a triple to right center. That was beautiful. So a lot of moving parts to this inning, the way it. That was the game within the game right there, yeah. that inning. Taking the bunt off, letting him swing. Lindor didn't get too big with it, just did a nice line drive on a fastball. It's been a 20 pitch inning for Justin Verlander. Back out of play. Take a look at how he's broken down by inning because he's been pretty efficient. Now coming in uh, to this game, over his last five starts in 35 and two thirds innings, he's only allowed three earned runs, and they get three earned runs here in the sixth. Yeah, the way it was going through five, he didn't know if they'd get any. Gomes cuts and misses. It's 0 and 2.
right back to the screen. It's fun, though, to watch an offense that has a little bit of speed and guys that can put the ball in play. You get a, a fast guy like Martinez on base, Kipnis behind him, then you get Lindor up there, the, the threat of the bunt. Maybe it's in their minds and they're thinking one way, and then he puts the ball in play and finds a gap, sparks the whole inning. Instead of sitting back well, waiting for the big three run home. That's, that's the way Kansas City plays a lot. They start a lot of runners, you know, and they move it around because of their big ballpark, and you don't hit a lot of home runs. That's the way you have to play. You have to get guys that can put the ball in play when they're starting somebody in motion and hit it on the ground, not in the air. He just did a nice line drive. Lindor did it. Well, with the Indians pitching, if they're going to keep you in ball games like this, there's nothing wrong with trying to get that lead early. This happened to be in the middle part of the game because both pitchers have been throwing the ball very well today. Indians are 42 and 13 on the year when they score first. And Gomes with a soft serve single to center keeps the inning alive. Fourth hit in the inning for Cleveland, although five, the score's decision notwithstanding, technically. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with that. There's a breaking ball that was down. Gomes off the end of the bat. It wasn't a bad pitch. Give Gomes credit for putting it in play. And served it into center field, so the inning continues. So two on and two out as Verlander now closes in on 100 for the day. The Tigers just now get a right hander up in their bullpen. The eighth man to bat in the inning is Abraham Almonte. And it was Almonte who tripled with two outs last inning. Tally Feliz, who we saw warming up last night in the game, is up for Detroit. <laughs> Told you, tribes 42 and 13 when they score first. What's been really important is when they score four or more. That's the magic number. They're 50 and 17. One shy of that now. Lazy fly to center. And drifting in the left center, Collins makes the catch. That'll end the inning. But Francisco Lindor lights up Verlander for a two run triple, and the Indians lead it three to nothing. Our in-game recap brought to you by your Toyota dealers. 
Everything that happened came in the sixth inning. Francisco Lindor with a two run triple. And then after an out, Carlos Santana with a RBI single to center field, bringing home Lindor. Bottom of the sixth, Andrew Romine to lead it off. Cody Anderson. Buzzed his way right through the Tigers lineup first time through. Second time through, he's had some issues, but twice he's induced a couple of key double play balls to get out of trouble. To left field. Long run for Martinez. Oh, and he makes a spectacular catch on the dead run. Ball was over his head and it looked like it was by him, but he reached out at the last second and snared it. Wasn't sure he was going to catch up to it, but that's a nice play. The left hander hitting it towards the line. It's going to slice away from him a little bit. But on the dead run at the last minute, put the glove up right in the middle of it. That takes an extra base hit away from Romine. So a very nice play. Well, as Andre told us a couple of nights ago, Martinez is here to essentially audition for a spot as a utility man on this club. He's got some big league experience. He's played over in the National League before. And by all accounts, he was a terrific teammate this year down at AAA in Columbus, helping guys like Lindor and Urshela develop, getting rewarded now with an opportunity and trying to show his stuff. Anthony goes, cuts and misses. Got to be a, a big pick me up for Cody Anderson to a get out of a couple of jams and then the offense puts three on the board. Well, the, the difference in the ball game. They Detroit went back to back first and second, nobody out, and they couldn't capitalize. The only time the Indians had the opportunity, they did. A little bit low. Two and two. Right back. Out of play, left side. Dixon Machado waiting on deck, the 2 2. Hit to third. Ramirez writes himself, throws him out. One away, or two down, excuse me. Dixon Machado. Really good bunt single his last time up. Perfect execution and it, it set the Tigers up. Yes, it did. After the leadoff walk. But boy, Rick, after so many games and days of watching Miguel Cabrera just literally pound the Indians pitching into submission. He finally got him today with that double play ball. Your fans watching at home were kind of saying to themselves, Here we go again. Two on, nobody out. Cabrera's up. Well, coming into this series, he was hitting over 600 against the Indians this year. They've done a, a, a good job. Yeah, just one out of nine. Checked his swing. Cody Anderson can't get it. Gonna make it a tough play for Kipnis, but he gets him with a bare hand grab and throw. And the inning is over. Detroit goes in order. And we roll on to the seventh. Cleveland three, Detroit nothing.
Baseball is brought to you by Kia. Visit MyKiaCleveland.com to learn more. By Levin Mattress, located in all Levin Furniture and freestanding locations. And by AT&T Uverse, has more channels on the go than cable. Three nothing Cleveland as we go to the seventh inning. Jose Ramirez 0 for 2 on the day. Takes a slow breaking ball for a strike. Bounce to first. Nice play by Victor Martinez. One away. Our injury report today is brought to you by Elk and Elk. We'll take a look at some of the key injuries around Major League Baseball. Kyle Schwarber with a rib cage injury for Chicago. That's not good news for them. Mark Teixeira still down with that deep shin bruise. You have to wonder if there's if it's not worse than that. And that's that's a costly injury for New York. He was having a fantastic season before he got hurt. New York's still only a game and a half behind Toronto. Martinez up the middle. It gets under the glove of Roma. Martinez is aboard with his second hit of the game. That's when it looked like Romine was going to get to, and it just goes off the end of his glove going to his backhand side. Up the middle, you'll see, he gets a jump on it, just doesn't come up with it. Jason Kipnis steps in. Now Jason, his last time up, hit a ball up the middle. Romine made a nice play on it, went to second, didn't get the force because Martinez was running on the play. And then when they relayed the ball to first, Kipnis was safe after review. Now the throw down to second base, and Martinez is out. Delayed steal is what he did. He went out there and delayed, shuffled, shuffled, waited, and then took off. But Can did a nice job staying with him. And usually you delay steal when you. There's the shuffle, the shuffle. He maybe went just a hair too quickly. As a shortstop Machado, you usually catch the infielders with their heads down if you do that. He was ready for it. Trying to make something happen with a 3 0 lead, though. So two down and a 1 0 pitch to Kipnis. But on that last, uh, that previous at bat by Kipnis, it was ruled a, a base hit. We thought maybe it should have been a fielder's choice. But in the official scorer's mind, and I, I now that I see that replay, I understand why he's saying that because of the way Roman fielded the ball off balance, he was staggering up the middle. He's saying in his mind he doesn't have a, a routine out at first base on Kipnis, and I tend to agree. I hadn't really. I was. We were looking at everything but Romine's effort on that play because of it, the review, which was on the call at first on Kipnis. And Jason's probably saying, look, with the luck I've had in this series, you've got to give me a hit. Well, he, he got one. That's okay. And you know what? Kudos to the scorer for at least taking a look at it and saying, you know what? I don't I don't think he would have had a play on him at first. You know, yeah, when you look at it again, I was looking at the play at second base. They were trying for the double play. Or actually just trying to get the lead runner. This time Jason draws a walk with two down to keep the inning going. Well, tomorrow we'll be in Chicago on Labor Day. South side, Indians, White Sox, Chris Sale, Trevor Bauer, your matchup. Alan Jensen will start our holiday coverage with Indians Live at 1.30. First pitch at 2 right here on Sports Time Ohio. Lindor 
The two-run triple is last time on. Yankees lead Tampa 4-3. They're in the seventh in the Bronx. Toronto beating Baltimore 6-2 in the fifth. Yeah. Tampa had a 3-0 lead. Archer on the mound. So the Yankees come back with four unanswered. Was trying to take it with him. Okay, we're going in to see Chicago, and they're playing well right now. They're looking at a sweep against Kansas City. They're up early on the Royals. It was uh, Cueto going for the Royals today, too. I think it was 5 1 Chicago. Lindor sends a fly ball to center field. Back goes Anthony goes. He makes the catch. The inning is over. Stretch time in Detroit. Indians three. Tigers nothing. Seventh inning stretch brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. As promised earlier, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. On this date, in 1995, Cal Ripken Jr. on a 3-0 pitch. We talked about it last night. In a home run. On the same night, he broke Lou Gehrig's record for consecutive games played. And then the little lap around the field. That was not planned. It was impromptu spur of the moment. A couple of his teammates said, you got to get out there and do this, or these people are never going to stop with the ovation. We're going to be here all night. So they pushed him out, literally. And Billy Ripken made a good comment, too. He said, you know, in this day and age, you see a game in a big moment.
there's, there's always a couple of people that are looking at their phone, checking stuff on their phone. It goes pre-cell phone era, really, 1995. Yeah. Nobody was looking at their phones. They were all focused on the field and on him. I think it's safe to say that that, uh, that is a record that will not be broken. The consecutive game streak. Well, think about it, Rick. You had to play every day, not miss a game for 16 years, and then some. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, that'll never happen again. At least in my lifetime. It's insane. Just to just to consider everything that just has to, to play be. one year <laughs> every game is unbelievable. And now Well, here's a perfect rest example. guys. Ground ball to third. Ramirez makes the throw to get Cabrera. Watching that ball game yesterday. Tampa Bay, New York. Grady Sizemore has done a nice job kind of revitalizing his career with the Rays. He played every day for, what, 400-some-odd games, I think, with the Indians? Close. He had a pretty good streak going there. That's 400. That's like a quarter of the way there. And no, not even. Not even. A, a 20%. And, uh, and what happened? His body broke down on him. Yeah. Injury after injury. Speaking of injuries, yeah, what's, what's going on? what's going on here? Cody Anderson awaits Terry Francona and drive trainer Jeff Desjardin. I don't know if they saw something. They're looking down. I wonder if it's some, something with his legs. I have no idea. I wasn't. We were sitting talking about that. I didn't see anything. I saw he got the ground ball out, and that's that. He's fine. You know, the one thing is it's, it's hot today. It's hu it's been humid all weekend. You'll wonder about guys just you know, do you potentially cramp up at some point. I have to imagine they're pounding water and Gatorade in between innings. Cody, you know, he's a we showed you in, Tor in Toronto. He sweats a ton. Remember his hat was dripping with water. So J.D. Martinez over two. He's fly to center both times up. Missed inside ball one. To play the middle infield too and, and to endure that streak is equally impressive. Yeah, it, it's absolutely crazy. And in the one time. I mean, the, it, he admitted that he, he was really, he thought, oh, this might be it. Is the, there was a bench clearing incident. And he got kind of caught up in the in the the undertow, twisted his knee up. Yeah. And showed up the next day and said, well, I don't know about this. But they got him wrapped up, taped up. Well, you figure yeah, how many times you've never been hit with a pitch where you just couldn't do anything or a foul ball off your foot that you couldn't, you had to miss a game or two in all that time. You know, you can. You can appreciate the pain that he had to have played through. Oh my goodness. Foul third base side. Now the other thing that his brother Billy Ripken pointed out is that you know a lot of people made the case that him playing all those games the streak that it hurt the team in some ways because he wasn't at his best at times. But the other thing Billy said, what they, what they failed to point out is he might have been in an 0 for 17 slump with a nasty right hander coming in, but he was in the lineup. Yes, sir. He was accountable day in and day out. Yep. That's what you need. It's tough to find the guys like that anymore. Two, three. Dynamite performance today by Cody Anderson. Seven shutout innings.
of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Stay tuned for Indians Live presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care coming up next here on Sports Time Ohio. Alan Jensen will have the highlights. All the action that took place here today. Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen. Tom Gorzolani is the first reliever into the game today. Justin Verlander went seven, made 107 pitches. Charged with three runs on seven hits, walked two, struck out four. Five of the seven hits came in one inning. For yeah, Verlander how about today. that? That's right. They took advantage of the only time they had him on the ropes. The other time it was in the fifth inning when they got their first hit. It was a two out triple by Almonte. So they didn't take advantage there because there was two outs, but they certainly did. First and second, nobody out. Michael Brantley 0 for 3 today. And he waves at it, nothing in two. Pops one up. The shortstop Machado barely has to move. One away. Time for another Mazda game break. Here's Al Pulaski. Thanks for the update there, Al. Carlos Santana swings and bounces at foul third base side. And a bit outside one and one. Martinez moving over and he's got that for out number two. Time now for our T-Mobile Data Strong fan photo of the game. And don't forget to tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STO Data Strong Fan for a chance to have one of your pictures shown in an upcoming telecast courtesy of T-Mobile. As Lonnie Chisholm all over two with a walk. And Gorzolani slings it in there for a strike. And he shoots that one just foul. He was trying to get it inside the bag. Just off the mark. Outside. Now the one, two. 
rope foul. Yeah, he let that breaking ball on the inside part of the plate. She's all hammered and foul. This will be the Indians' last day in the Motor City for the 2015 campaign. Detroit, though, will be in Cleveland as part of that big homestand when we return. The one two. Did he go? They appeal. He did. We'll head to the bottom of the eighth now. It remains Cleveland three, Detroit nothing. of the eighth inning it's time now for our Pat O'Brien Chevrolet play of the game or in this case plays of the game Miguel Cabrera bounced into a double play in the fourth after the Tigers had two on nobody out and then J.D. Martinez flying out to end the inning came right back in the fifth same situation two on nobody out Tyler Collins strikes out and then James McCann hits into the inning ending double play yeah he made a couple of big pitches in this ball game when he needed to and then it was the very next inning after that that the Indians were able to get their selves first and second, and they took advantage of it. And so Cody Anderson went seven, two hit shutout innings today with two walks and three strikeouts. He gives way now to Brian Shaw, making his 60th appearance of the year. Cody uh, only gave up three hits in his last start to Toronto in six innings and a couple of runs. So a couple of really nice starts on this road trip for Cody Anderson. Toward the seats, just couldn't get to it. By comparison's sake, there's probably as much foul territory here at Comerica Park as there is in any of the new ballparks that you have yeah, today. Heading down the line, you're right. Quite a bit. Two strikes. Wouldn't be a trip to Comerica Park. Not a chance to bump into Al Kaline, one of the all time greats, known as Mr. Tiger. Spent 22 big league seasons in a Tigers uniform. Ten time gold glover. Batting title in 1955.
was the youngest batting champion in American League history when he won it that year at just 20 years old. Are you kidding me? Yeah. They don't even allow guys to play in the big leagues he's, now. I'll well, tell he, you what, he's, he was a terrific ball player. Was uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1980. And at that time, he was only the 10th player ever elected in his first year of eligibility. So that A tells you about his career, tells you about how highly thought of he is by those who vote, how respected he is in the game. And he treats everybody with so much yeah, respect. How can you a not nice like him? Yeah. No question. Still does a lot of work with the Tigers organization here. Now the 2 2. And he stopped by the Indians clubhouse to check in with Terry Francona. Andre not has more on that downstairs. He did stop in and talk to Tito earlier today. And Tito told me, he goes, the great thing about him is how nice he is. But he told a story how things have changed. He said when he was called up to the big leagues, his one of his uh, teammates pulled him up, grabbed him by the neck and said, you're taking my best friend's position. You better learn how to play. So he said right then he learned he better play good baseball. And he says he went on, he learned a lot from that guy. He wouldn't name who it was because he didn't want to embarrass him. But he said that made him mature quickly in his career. Then afterwards, he told Tito, he goes, hey, it's the last time you guys are coming into town. He goes, hope I see you next year. Tito looked at him and says, you're in better shape than me despite your age. <laughs> foul ball. Castellanos will not go quietly no, here in the eighth he's... inning. He steps back in. Friday night, the Indians did all the damage with 11 hits and eight runs. The Tigers scored just one. They returned the favor yesterday, shutting out the Indians 6 0. Now the Indians have gone back. The Tigers have just two hits today, and they, have, they are not on the board. 3 0 ball game. And a base hit in the right field. Collins had been 0 for 2. McCann will be the batter. He's 0 for 2 on the day. Last time he was up, he hit into that double play we showed you a little while ago. It ended the fifth inning. Strike nothing into the count. See, Kinsler is on deck for the Tigers. For Romine. Swung on and missed. 
can down on strikes and there are two away. And we will indeed see Ian Kinsler in a pinch hit roll now. Comes back with another breaking ball. And a beauty. And it has McCann out in front. This will be Kinsler's first pinch hit appearance of the year. But inside, two and zero. Oh. <laughs> well, it's suddenly three and zero. Oh. Top of the order, looming. Kinsler swings at the 3-0 pitch and sends a lazy fly ball to left. Martinez makes the catch, and the inning is over. We'll go to the ninth. Cleveland three, Detroit nothing. All right, thanks, Al. Rick, did you ever uh, square off against Lee Smith in a spring training affair out in uh, oh, yeah. Arizona? Oh, yeah. Long time ago. He was a starter for the first part of his career, wasn't he? You know. Or was he always a relief guy? I always remember him as a relief okay. guy. He may have been, but uh, he was a pretty intimidating guy oh. out on the mound. Big dude. Yeah. Neftali Feliz on the, for the 38th time this year. Yeah, he was.
was a he was a big time starter. Five times in his career he started. Okay. Mike tells me. No, well, well, he did so. I don't remember him starting, but five times. Well, somebody quickly realized, you know, this guy can help us at the back end of the bullpen. Yeah. And that would have been early enough to where people weren't really specializing. Well, he'd go, for, I'm sure, a couple of innings. Mm -hmm. Six out saves. Deal one. High pop. That one inning save never came around until probably late 80s. It was that out in uh, Oakland. Tony LaRusso was the manager. Where they'd go, you know, three outs. That's that's yep. what we need. Three out saves, and that's it. Two. Unfortunately for them, for closers in particular, the things that you most remember about them are the, the spectacular flameouts, the games they end up losing because they're so dramatic when it happens. Yeah, they had so many of them. But the two moments I re remember about Lee Smith, one was, of course, the Albert Bell Grand Slam to win a game in '95. After which he said he hit it in the barbecue pit. The other one I remember was he would have been pitching for, I think it might have been St. Louis. But he had Barry Bonds, and Barry Bonds hadn't quite become the superstar yet, but he was well on his way. And he, I think he had him down two strikes. And after the game, Bonds said, I never saw the two fastballs he threw. But 0 2, he went to a slider, <laughs> and he got him for a home run to win the game. Yeah. Well, two pretty good hitters you're talking about. They had to get them. Yeah, Albert <laughs> Bell and Barry Bonds. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't give up many big hits to Punch and Judy's. No, no. He was just go out there. I'm not sure how many saves he had, but it was a boatload. Abraham Almonte, so this is what you were talking about before. Five games in only 27 triples since 1914. Only the sixth player to do that. With the innings, how about Larvel Blanks? Larvel Blanks, yeah. What position did Blanks play? He could. He was a little infielder, played second base and around. He was a strong guy. He wasn't very big, but he was strong. To left field, that's going to get down for a base hit, and Abraham Almonte has. <laughs> A two for four performance here today. Well, he hit a fastball away, and I mean, drilled it over the head. Ghost tried to make a diving catch. It gets by him. He gets up quickly to re get that ball in, but not before El Monte gets the triple. One of two on the day for Cleveland. The very next inning, Francisco Lindor hit one with a couple of guys on base. Ramirez pops it up, shallow center, long run in for Goes, but he makes the catch. Two down. And he threw it back to first and ended up hitting Almonte. Watch where this. Watch where the throw ends up hitting Almonte. He's kind of. He was off that there. far to even make a throw. That was a useless throw right there. It wasn't really a chance to get him. He wasn't that far off the base. Michael Martinez, two for three, two singles, a run scored. Will be the batter now. Checked on this ball inside and it went off the backstop. Karen back to the pitcher. And El Monte is in the scoring position on a wild pitch. <laughs> he wants this away, almost hit the umpire in the knee. Yeah, it sure did. That was way 
off his mark. Noticed Rick, and I know it's only a few at bats, but Martinez, he likes that high pitch. He's chased after it a couple of times. Well, he's a guy that has to get it down. It's it's the pitch he sees. Chased after a Verlander fastball and struck out earlier. Back in the third inning. On a, yeah, on a high fastball that was out of the zone. And he follows the high fastball up with a nice little breaking ball over the outside corner. Just a bit outside. And it's two and two. Two down, a runner at second. And Michael Martinez looking for his third hit of the game. Right back to Feliz. It gets through and it's into center field. He will have a three hit game and he will drive home the Indians' fourth run of the afternoon. That ball went right through Neftali Feliz. His first hit came off a breaking ball. Yeah, went right back up the middle. He loves the middle part of the field, huh? Yeah, that sure one does. went off the glove of Romine. Now watch this one. Feliz is not happy. He thought he had it. It went right under his glove. Four nothing Cleveland as Jason Kipnis stands in. Right back to the screen. Here's the O2. Three call. Kipnis is rung up to end the inning. But Michael Martinez with a three hit day extends the Indians' lead to four to nothing.
Looking back at our keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Worked the pitch count on Justin Verlander. He breezed through most of this game. He had one inning that the Indians caught him. They tagged him for five hits and scored three runs in the sixth. Cody Anderson was terrific once again here this afternoon. Went seven innings, gave up just two hits, two key double play balls turned behind him. And now it's Cody Allen's turn to pitch here in the ninth. Not a safe situation now after the RBI single by Martinez in the top half of the inning. But he'll be charged with getting through the top of the order. Anthony goes, Dixon, Machado, and Miguel Cabrera do up. Well, he hasn't pitched in the series, so he's up. Let's bring him in, save or not. Get some work in, and it'll be the top of the lineup. So the Indians with an opportunity to take two out of three here in Detroit. Even their record on the road to three and three and head into Chicago to finish this road trip up with three games starting with Sale and Bauer tomorrow. And then he goes is 0 for 2. He has grounded out twice. He drew a walk back in the fourth inning. O'Brien Chevrolet play of the game and I got me thinking you were talking about it on the bus the other day I noticed out in center field above the high above the wall they've got that that new Chevy Corvette that yeah. is a Yellow. sharp sharp looking car yes it is I wouldn't mind going up there and taking it down and driving it to Chicago <laughs> there it is but there it is doesn't necessarily have to be that color but that's a, a beauty yeah, that you'd get noticed in that one. You think? <laughs> now the one-one. That's the color for Omar. I was just thinking the I same thing. <laughs> Save that for him over at first base. Yep. Never one to back down from anything flamboyant, where style is concerned. That might be his car up there. <laughs> now that we talk about it. The one two to goes. Trying to get the fastball inside on the corner and missed. Two and two. Low full count. Twenty eight thousand nine hundred and sixty four. The announced attendance here this afternoon on a warm Sunday early September 86 at game time. It's creeped up to 89 now here in the ninth. Day. Right by Anderson or Cody Allen excuse me and it's Lindor who picks him up throws him out. One away I was thinking Cody Anderson because we're going to show you some Cody Anderson from today. Well Cody again another. Beautiful start for him. Just two hits in his seven innings. And when he had the issues, that fourth and fifth inning, he made the pitches to get out of it. Double plays turned in both innings. And after that, the Indians were able to come back and put something on the board. He was terrific. He was fun to watch today, going out there, throwing strikes, seven innings, two hits. That was him in the first four starts of his career this year. Well, and, and it's nice to see him bounce back against two very good lineups, yeah, Toronto had, and Detroit. Gave up three hits in that game in six innings, two hits here in seven innings. So, yes, it is. It was very nice to see. Dixon Machado foul, third base side. Not by much. No, it was not. This kid looks like he likes to get on a fastball. He pulled one down there on Friday night. A double down the line. That was a 95 mile an hour fastball broke his bat
line to center, but right there is Almonte. Boy, he had him play perfectly. Yes, he did. The guy's only played a few games. They knew right where to set up for him, though. Two down, Miguel Cabrera, the batter. Cody Allen looking to put the finishing touches on a series win for the Indians. Fly ball right field. Monty Chisnall on the track in the corner. He makes the catch to end the game. Tigers go one, two, three. And the Indians take two out of three from Detroit. Cody Anderson goes seven, gets the win. He's three and three. Justin Verlander went seven but gave up three runs. He gets the loss. He falls to three and seven. The Indians will leave Detroit 66 and 69 on the year. And Detroit is now 62 and 74. Story today though Cody Anderson's pitching and the bat of Francisco Lindor he got him on the board in the sixth and the Indians never looked back today. Well yeah a good way to end this series here in Detroit they come back and they win the series. They don't win many games up here but it was a good weekend for them. They knocked the baseball around on Friday night and they got great pitching that night with Tomlin the complete game and they wrap it up with a nice pitching performance by Cody Anderson and end up taking two out of three so we'll get right back and hey we got another tough lefty we're gonna have to face tomorrow going into Chicago so let's enjoy this a short little trip and we'll see you in Chicago all right so that's gonna wrap things up the Indians win it four to nothing is the final score here in Detroit for Rick Manning and Andre not I'm Matt Underwood. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy your Labor Day weekend. We'll greet you tomorrow from the Windy City at 2 o'clock Eastern time with the first pitch.